Praise the Lord. My dear friends, we are entering into the 19th week of the ordinary Sunday. Today's gospel teaches us that Luke's gospel chapter 12 verse 32 O little flock, do not be afraid for it has pleased the Father to give you the kingdom. To the little ones, he wants to give the kingdom. When Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit, he said, Daddy, I thank you for revealing the great secrets to these little ones. He looked at the disciples, he thanked the Father, and now he is telling them, Father is desiring to give the kingdom to you. To the eyes of the world, you may be little, but you have a great kingdom to which you belong to, which daddy wants to give it to you and me. This is the first secret God reveals to us from the gospel of today. Yes, many of the time, we tend to look at our littleness, but blessed are those, though we may be look, looking little, small, or insufficient in the eyes of the world, Life is not built there. Life begins to happen to you. What you are in the world is not the matter. Who am I in the Lord is the matter. If you take that stand, it is there you begin to grow. Esther was an orphan girl. Didn't God make her the queen and to save the whole nation? Judith was a widow, young girl, Last year, husband doesn't mean she can lose life. As long as you don't lose God, you lose nothing in life. She became a mighty warrior, which men could not go unto. A woman did it and brought victory to the people of Israel. David was a short guy, a shepherd boy, but he became so close friend of God. And he ruled the Israel for 40 years. A great king. Yes, that's what the Lord says. Be aware of who you are. Be aware of your identity from the sight of the Lord. That's what we read in Psalm 113 verse 7. The Lord lifts up people from the dust and he makes them to sit among the kings. That's what Jesus says. O little flock, he tells the disciples, God wants to give his kingdom. Kingdom means in the kingdom there is power. In the kingdom there is sufficiency. In the kingdom there is security. All this will be available to those who look at themselves from the eyes of God. Those who can see their identity is in connected with God. That I am the child of God. I have a savior who died for me and shed his blood for me. He has forgiven my sins and made me his child. God anoints me with his Holy Spirit. Yes, and I am his witness. Those who are aware of it, though in the eyes of the world we are small, we become so great with the power of heaven operating in our lives. The second thing the Lord tells us today in the gospel is where your treasure is, there your heart will be. In Luke's gospel, chapter 12, verse 34. Though what you are in the world is not the thing is going to decide your life, but if only you are aware of what you are in the Lord, why did the Lord create you? What is the vision of God for you? And what is your identity in your God? Will build up your life. Having said that, he says, there are so many people who have received great things of God in the life, but they have not lived the life of God because their minds are captured by various type of problems and struggles. And having knowing the truth that the kingdom is available for me, 
I belong to the kingdom is not sufficient. There are so many forces in the world to make me to think and to forget about what I am in the Lord and to think of myself as a man of the world, as man of the flesh, as the man of the tricks of the Satan and make my life zero. That's why Jesus says, you have to guard your heart. Proverbs 4.23 Above all, a guard your heart from the thoughts of your heart. Your life is built. I was told in an office, a man worked hard, struggled hard, though he was born in a poor family and reached to the rang up gadgeted officer. He was working in a very big government office. And in his office, as he was young, there were two young women who worked. One woman, she was a very, very sincere woman, very hard-working woman, always encouraged this man, you have come from poor family, but God is with you. Believe in the Lord. Work hard. Come up in life. But there was another lady who used to be always play with him. Always make him to have jokes, fun, to go have coffee, this and that. All his money was drained up with her. One day the another lady said, Look, what's happening to you? God has given you a wonderful job. Your forefathers were poor. Don't give up this job. So many people will be there in the world. But you should take care of yourself. That's what today gospel. In the gospel, Jesus says, watch at yourself. Watch what's happening to you. Like the servant who will be waiting for the master. Master can come at any time. The same way. And he is sometimes comparing the master like a thief who will come any time. Why? Because Satan sometimes comes like that. He comes and disturbs you like a thief. Which moment he will take you? This man, whenever he saw that lady who was guiding her, though she was younger to him, he liked that. He loved in her heart. If one day I marry her, my life will be so good. One day when she said, the young lady said, let's see if God wills, why not? I will marry you. And one day, because that another lady received a promotion, she started to love this man, guide this man, and she even said, I don't need promotion. I want to get married with this man. But she warned him, be careful with another lady. For some office work, she has to go for 10 days outside. And that is the moment. In the absence of the guiding force, we always tend to be pulled out by the evil force. Another lady took her hand on him, took him to different places. Don't worry about that lady. She is gone on 10 days mission. Come on, let's go. They took three days. They went somewhere else where he sinned with that woman. He made his life a mess. When he, after some time, when he came back, there was fight between both of them. So he took leave for a week and went away. Meanwhile, the friend who was guiding her, who was willing to even marry him, came back to the office. When she came to know what happened, her heart was broken. And when the man came back to the job, she didn't even talk. She said to him, don't come near me. I trusted you. I guided you. Life is full of disturbances. But one has to learn to know what is your treasure. It's not enough that the God is giving us the kingdom. God has prepared so many promises for us. We need to know what is our treasure. 
and we need to be aware of what are the thoughts what are the problems struggles disturbances in the world we have to come and sit at his feet and check our life what are the thoughts what are the diseases are growing in me and what i can do what i should not do a man without reflection will destroy one's life it is not by believing in god or even surrendering oneself to god a man grows but by deep reflection to handle one's life one has to learn to sit at his feet know oneself and direct oneself so the woman took the promotion and went away from there yes a wonderful friend guiding friend he lost and he made his life a mess god blesses us but the way we live become a blessing to god and a blessing for ourselves and others if you don't take care jesus says be alert if you are not bother about yourself to whom it is more given more will be expected you will be expelled and that is the second point today the lord is telling us you are little flock god wants to give the kingdom to you second if the kingdom has to be part of you you have to be aware of your treasure and to guard that treasure and to take care of your life thoughts emotions relationships riches many things are part of our life but the part of our life should not take over the essence of our life the core of our life the call and the mission of our life yes having said that jesus continues in the third point that is whatever god has given to us we have to develop it so what he says hey your lions keep your lambs up means we have to discipline ourselves we may have discovered what is life but that's that's not enough when we stand in the air though we stand a decent way the breeze that come can lift up our dress so we have to know we should know when we are standing in the open air tie the dress nicely such a way that the, you don't be embarrassed your dress is not lifted up in the air that's what the meaning tie the lines around your vest you are going for the work be prepared let not your dress let not what you wear or let not what you have becomes an obstacle for you to serve you have to discipline yourself what should be part of you what should not be part of you and second we are living in the dark world so keep alive the light light of god's thought to guide your thoughts constantly because it is the promise of the lord are primarily god's thoughts about us god's vision about us god's plan what god wants to do about us it is god's word will help our mind to recognize wrong disturbing thoughts are coming and to keep them in its place you need god's thought god's light to keep off the darkness yes that's what jesus says be prepared discipline yourself and serve god with your whole heart having said that in the fourth the lord says if you know though you are small the kingdom is for you god's power is available for you second you should know what is your treasure and take care of your heart because treasures which god gives and your heart are interconnected your thoughts have to be known and guided and directed third you have to discipline yourself lit what god gives you the word of god the holy spirit the holiness purity of life these are the lights these are the disciplined way of life of gospel when you live like that fourth god himself will come to serve you yes 
God himself, like we read in John 13, Jesus washed the feet of the disciples. Yes. Jesus said, you will do more than me. Yes. God will serve us. That's what we read in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 20. I stand at your door for you. If only you open your heart for me. If only you find your treasure in me and opening your heart for me. I will sit with you. I will dine with you. I will serve you. Yes, what a great life for which we are called. And that's what we find in today's second reading about Abraham. Abraham, a man who knew the treasure is his God. And things were not okay with him. Sometimes even he made mistakes with a lady like Hagar. But he came back to his sense. He came back to his God. And he became a man of faith. He carried the Lord. When the boy was asking, his own son was asking, Daddy, we are going to offer. Where is the offering? Abraham said, God will provide. A man of great faith. And God honored him. And amidst all the struggle, he was aware of who he is. He continued to serve God. That's why God served him. And from then on, as in the book of Galatians chapter 3 we read, all the blessings of Abraham is given to all of us through Christ Jesus. Yes. He, his whole generation was blessed as God promised. Yes. So we will become a blessing. Let's close our eyes and pray. Lord, in today's first reading, you said that dark night is trying to attack the world. But our forefathers, they knew that darkness means what? So they kept alive the light. But in later days, they forgot the light. And they became victim of the darkness. And they made their life miserable. Lord, this is the cry of Solomon. That should not be our cry, Lord. Help us to be aware of the great pressure that you have kept for us. Though we may be small in many things, but that doesn't matter. You who made Esther into queen. You who made David into king. You made Judith into a great warrior. An ordinary man, Nehemiah, into do a great work of building a wall around Jerusalem. Definitely, what I am in the world is not the matter. What I am in you, if only I am aware of the treasure that you have given to me. If only I am aware of my thoughts. And with your light, I should move ahead, overcome the darkness that surrounds me. And continue to love you and serve you. Then you yourself will serve me. And you will send the angels to guard me. What a great life you are giving to me, Lord. Please bless all those who are listening to this word. May they all, though they are small, they may not be afraid or worried or disturbed with what they have received from the world. Rather, they may rejoice and be strengthened and be courageous that they belong to the kingdom. Your power, your glory. Secondly, help us, Lord. That we will be always to live your treasure. We'll be aware of the heart of ours, the desires of ours, the planning of this world that is given to us. And we will be able to live with your power. We will discipline ourselves. We will seek your thoughts to understand the thoughts of the world, the thoughts that are coming to our minds and the hearts. We will take your word. We will kneel and pray that your heaven may be opened for us. We have to keep alive the light of the light of your word, the light of life of prayer, the light of the presence of your spirit. That we may always shine in you, Lord. That thank you, Lord. When we serve you, you yourself will be with us. Your spirit will be walking with us. Your Revelation will be given to us. I pray, Lord, for all these gifts for your children, those who are listening. May our lives be empowered and strengthened by you. Make us your witness 
in Jesus mighty name I pray amen may almighty god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit amen praise the lord